Danny from Pico here. I want to help you become a better Unity XR developer. Introducing to you our interaction sample project with a bunch of scenes designed to help you level up your skills. We have custom hand gestures. We have hand interactions for near and far interactions. We have spatial keyboards. This is an example of a world locked spatial keyboard here. And then we have hover effects, controller interactions. And at the end of this video, we'll go over how to make this drill, including setting up the buffered haptic, the audio, and the vibration effect. So in this project, we'll go over over the six scenes. We'll go, we'll create a new drill scene to create that drill. Go over how to do the grab interactable events, setting up buffered haptics, and creating two scripts, drill haptics control and the drill visual control to help with the drill. And requirements for this project, Pico OS 5.11, Unity Iteration SDK 3.0. We're using Unity 2022 and XR Toolkit 3.0. In our first scene, we have a basic controller and headset tracking. Next, we have locomotion. We have thumbstick movement, including teleportation on the right thumbstick here, and allow you to do a snap turn. Custom hand gestures. If you put down the controller, your hands will pop up. And with the left, you can make a fist that will open up the menu. You can see the values on the left here will show you what are the correct values that we set to make that specific pose. And on the right hand, we have the web shoot pose. So you can see once all the values turn green, you have the right values on your fingers and it will create and it will activate your custom gesture. Next scene here, this is our hand track interactions. We have near interactions, you can grab something near, then you can use a ray cast to do a far interaction. And let's move on to a spatial keyboard. This is an example of a locked keyboard here and you can click on any of the inputs, and then the left one here is an example of a, a world space keyboard. Then in our haptic scene, it allows us to poke, hover, these are all unbuffered haptics, so you just set an intensity, you just set a, a time and a, how hard you want to do your vibration. Then buffered haptics, this takes a wave audio file and uses that to create a haptic effect that follows the ups and downs of the wave file. And in this drill here, we have haptics, we have the audio of the drill, and we have the visual movement of there. So, so let's recreate this drill. I have the Unity project open here. Go to scenes, let's go to haptics and duplicate the haptic scene, or you just save as. We'll save it as a drill. And we're gonna remove everything, including the XR origin, and we'll just uh, use a basic project. So we're gonna use the prefab. Let's go ahead and delete this. Grab the prefab of the XR origin. So now we just have the room and the XR origin. Let's move our player to front of the table here so it's not too far. And let's create a container to hold our drill visual and our scripts. Call the drill container. Let's move the Z direction so it's facing forward. And let's move it a little bit lower so it's closer to the table. And let's go to models and find our drill. And let's increase Let's rotate it so it's facing the same direction as the Z direction as our parent. That's good. And let's move it to a little bit closer to the table. I don't want it to fall once we add our box glider and put some gravity in here. Okay, let's add our box glider. Uh, let's change the size to a little bit smaller and then we could just go in closer and just edit. It doesn't need to be perfect. We'll just make like a box right around the size of our drill. Add a rigid body so you can use gravity, add some, so you can use physics so you can grab it. X, uh, add a component XR grab interactable. This will be using the events here, the select event and the activate deactivated events here. And XR grabbable is, is interact with the player's uh, near and far interactor that's on the XR origin. And the XR grabble needs an attach transform. So let's create the attach transform as an empty object. Let's move it around the handle. Let's move the attach transform into the XR grabble, into the attach transform there. And if you look at the right, right controller, you have the near and far interactors. This will be interacting with our grab interactable. And the visuals here. We have right control the visual is a prefab given to you by Pico. Let's create a script here called the drill. 
First one is the drill haptics control. I'm going to open this up. So this will handle our haptics and it will handle the, how we handle the events. We're using the selected events, so we want to know if it's the right interactor or the left interactor uh, grabbing the drill. So we know uh, which hand it is and how we can hide it. So on select int enter, we need the selected enter event arguments here. So this is when you have the hand over the controller over the drill and you press the grip button. Uh, a little bit of edge case debugging here. And it doesn't edit here. It should be a dot interactor object if it's not known. All right, interactor object, and you can grab the handiness here to figure out if it's the left or right hand grabbing the object. So if it's the right hand, do something with the right hand. If it's the left hand, do something with the left hand here. And Studio, Media Studio is very nice in case you don't have the correct um, namespace here. It can usually guess the correct namespace for you. We need the interactor's namespace here. All right, so now we want to hide the controller, so let's go ahead and cache our, our game objects that hold our visuals. And if we do grab it, we want to hide these. And when we let go of the grip button, we want to activate the visuals. So what we did on select, we do the opposite on select exit. So we get the select exit event argument. We'll just copy this, basically the same thing. Just remember it's args.interactor object that we need. And set these to true, just doing the opposite. And the next event here is on activate. Activate where it's going to be when you're holding the drill and press the trigger button and we want some kind of action. Copy it. Back, pretty much the same thing. We want to know if it's the left hand or right hand so we can activate the correct haptics. And at the end of that, it doesn't really matter if we left the right hand, we'll start the drill audio. So for the haptics, we're gonna need our Pico namespace using unity.xr.pxr. And let's add in the components we need. First, we will do audio clip. This will allow us to use the length of this and the wave file as our buffered haptics. And we need an audio source to play the uh, drill clip audio. And then we're going to be caching the int for you from the buffered haptics. So let's cache buffered haptics. Right now, this only works on the Pico 4 and Pico 4 Ultra uh, controllers. This will not work on the Neo 3 and lower. Send so buffer haptics. So we're, what we're going to need the vibration type of left or right controller. And then we use the drill clip as our wave file. Uh, we don't want to flip the channels. And our, we're going to cache this and drill right half the cache. And we're going to cache and not vibrate because we're doing this at start. We just want to cache this in memory. So we got the left controller there. Then drill left half the cache here. Let's go ahead and do this on awake. There's a capital U there. Change that. Okay, looks good. So now let's add in our haptics. So now that we cache, we just all we have to do is just start the buffer haptics and we just use the cache int. And for the right hand, this is for the left hand. Then we're just gonna use the audio source and just play one shot of our audio clip. And then on deactivate, we'll do the opposite. We'll stop the haptic buffer and we'll stop the audio uh, sound. Go ahead and copy this, trigger release while holding it, and let's stop the drill haptics and let's stop the sound. We'll just do a basic stop here, and this will be stop haptic buffer again. And that's for the right hand, stop haptic buffer for the left hand, use the same cache. And we also want to stop these things when we release it. So not just releasing the trigger, but when we release the grip, when we drop the drill, we also want to stop all the audio as well. So let's go on select exit. When we release the grip, we'll stop the audio. But we also want to make sure the, um, the drill stops vibrating if it is already vibrating. So we'll stop the haptic buffer there. OK, looks good. Do, 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 do. 
The next, we'll do the vibration visual, so that the movement uh, vibration effect. You can play around with the numbers here for the intensity and the speed to give you the effect you want. Uh, the transformed, just so we know how to go back to the original position that was in its hand. Vibration intensity, how far it's going in and out of that original position. And this should be 0 0.04, not 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is will be a little bit crazy. It's how fast it's going to be moving, so we'll do a vibration speed. And then we'll use the drill clip so we can grab the length of the drill clip so we know how long we should be doing the vibration so it matches up with the sound and the haptics. So we'll use the drill clip as our max time and then while it's active, we'll start counting the time and then we'll stop it at the max time. So let's cash in our original position once it's in the player's hand. That's our start position and rotation. Let's grab our max time from our drill clip, clip length. Now you can play around the max time. You can add a few seconds here and there, depending on the clip you use. Sometimes it might end early. So on drill activate, we'll set the time to zero and add in the active state to be true. So in our update, if it's true, we'll do an action. When we let go, drill uh, activate state is false. Move the the drill back to the original position where before we started all this vibration. So if it is active, increase our current time, and if, as long as the current time is smaller than our max time, we'll do some vibration. Once it goes past our max time, we want to turn the, the drill to deactivate the drill, which will just turn the state to false and then move it to back to the start position. So the drill vibration, so we need some randomness. So we'll do a vector three. Some random position, and I like to use inside the unit sphere, and we'll multiply it by our vibration intensity. Same thing with the rotation. When it Quaternion dot Euler random dot inside unit sphere, and multiply vibration intensity. Now we want to add this randomness to our positions, and we want to slowly move it towards these positions. So we'll use lerp and slurp. From a local position to our new random position and vibration speed. You can multiply vibration speed times the delta time, but for this project, we'll just keep it at simple vibration speed. Then for local rotation, quaternion dot slurp. And we'll make sure to use it and add it into our drill vibration. In our update, let's go and add our scripts. And let's fill up these cache here in the variables. Add our audio source, don't play on wake. And then in the audio, you'll find the drill audio. It's a short version of the drill audio. You add it into our drill clips there, and then the drill visual. Add it in, and then controller visual will be in our XR origin. Looks good. Let's go ahead and populate our uh, events. And just add in our drill container because our script is on the drill container there. And drill haptic on on activate. And then the drill visual on deactivate, drill visual deactivate. Same thing here drill haptics on select and deactivate and change our vibration to 0 0.04 so it's not so crazy looks good make sure you add in our new scene here all right we grab it the controller disappears and we press the trigger button it moves the sound of haptics following the sound of the wave file looks good all right, thanks for following along this tutorial. Can't wait to see what you guys build. This is Danny from Pico. Have a good day.